Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us here for Crime 2 News at 4. I'm Whitney Ward. Welcome, everyone. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Tom is off today. We continue to cover several large wildfires burning across the inland northwest. So here is a live look at the Ford Corkscrew fire tonight. It is one of the most destructive wildfires in our area right now. So the fire right now estimated to have burned at least 14,000 acres so far. It started on Sunday afternoon near the town of Ford. The fire grew rapidly yesterday due to what fire crews have called extreme fire conditions. Officials also said resources are spread thin this year due to the high fire activity. So far, at least 20 buildings, including 12 homes, have been lost in the Ford Corkscrew fire. So those include some in the town of Ford, as well as houses in the Rail Canyon area. The flames moved so fast that some people just didn't even have time to pack any of their belongings before they had to run away. So I think that's the hardest part for me is just having to leave behind um, our family mementos and photographs, basically everything like that is gone. And so that is really hard for me to think about knowing that I don't have those anymore. Yeah, certainly tough. Luckily, mm. Melody and her family were able to make it out safely with their dogs. And despite a number of houses being lost, so far, nobody has been hurt. Well, this afternoon, the Ford Corkscrew fire still at 0% containment, but fire officials say crews have started forming lines around part of the fire. Firefighters say this extreme drought and the number of fires burning in the region have certainly stretched their resources extremely thin. We are spread very thin uh, and all resources, all fires have been spread very thin during this year. So crews from out of the area are now providing at least some help, but officials say they're simply tackling these fires with fewer resources because there are so many burning across the region right now. Also tonight, the Walter Creek fire has now grown to more than 22,000 acres. On Saturday, three fires, the Walter Creek, Spur and Chickadee fires, all in Okanagan County combined. Today, a community open house will be taking place at 7 in the evening. That's going to be at the History Park Community Pool in Tenasket. Today, crews are working on fire containment lines and putting out additional spot fires. We are also tracking a fire burning two miles southwest of 25 Mile Creek State Park. It's being called the 25 Mile Fire. Today it is burning more than 4,200 acres. Grass, brush, and timber are burning in this wildfire. The cause remains under investigation. And in Idaho, the Deceitful and Pritchard fires have combined now into the Character Complex. That fire has grown more than 10,000 acres. Tonight it is 10% contained. As of this morning, we're told there were no injuries and no homes lost. Communities in Eagle, Murray, and Beaver Creek are all under a level 3 evacuation order, which means get out right now. Power is also out in those communities, and a number of roads are closed. Those include Kings Pass, Pritchard Creek Road, and Thompson Pass. We know this is a a lot of information and there's a lot more that we didn't get to get to in this broadcast. Yeah, so to make it easy for you, all you have to do is text the word fire to 509-448-2000. We'll send you the links with the latest information right to your phone. In the meantime, anytime we are talking about this many fires, certainly wind is a factor. We want to check in with Thomas Patrick, who's in the Outdoor Weather Center tonight. Thomas? Yeah, and that wind was really picking up yesterday. It's still the same in terms of intensity today, mainly in that 30 mile per hour wind gust range, though more so out of the north as opposed to the west, like what we saw yesterday. But there is good news. I got radar up because we have some scattered showers and even a few thunderstorms in the region. Good rainfall producers. We just could use maybe a little bit more here. Let's actually zoom in over northeastern Washington. You can see actually a band of some widespread rain from about Colville Kettle Falls down towards uh, southern Stevens County as well. This is pretty much just going to meander, stay scattered for the next few hours here, but rain in any of our northern regions is certainly going to be welcomed. It's going to be helping at least some of the fire fire firefighting efforts. But remember the winds a little bit breezy today. You're expecting things to calm down a bit more for tomorrow. Wind gusts about 30 miles per hour here in Spokane, a little bit stronger in Okanagan County. Where OMAC has reported a 40 mile per hour wind gusts today. We see cloud cover through the evening hours tonight. This will come with still some more rain chances overall. We're tracking both how long the uh, rain is going to linger in our area and these cooler temperatures, which should help things out this week as well. So I have that plus an air quality forecast, pretty much the usual stuff to, uh, to be broadcasting here in just a few minutes. Talk to you then. Thank you very much. A day after a deadly fire ripped through a Browns Edition apartment, killing two people and displacing others, the community sh showing their support for the victims now. So according to a spokesperson with GoFundMe, about $23,000 has already been raised across nine different campaigns for those families. In addition to these fundraising efforts, Backyard Public House is donating 10% of all of its sales today 
to his two employees who lost everything in the fire. Joy McClary has worked at Backyard for three years now. She moved into the white historic building next to the Tiffany Manor a few weeks ago. So she escaped the fire yesterday morning with just the clothes on her back. She told Crime 2's Amanda Rowley she's still grateful, though, to the community don donations to help her move forward. It's very overwhelming. Um, I catch myself tearing up every 30 minutes and, you know, thinking about the people who I don't even know or, you know, putting money in the GoFundMe page or coming here to donate for me and for Ryan. And just, it's amazing. This afternoon, some of the firefighters who responded to the Browns Edition fire got lunch at Backyard Public House. They say they just want to support the fundraising efforts there. And there are many more people whose lives have changed after that fire, including another family of a woman who died that morning. Coming up tonight at 5, her family will share how they are trying to remember her. And one of the victims who died in the fire has been identified. Her name was Sherry Vick. She was a mother and grandmother. Creme 2's Amanda Rowley spoke with Sherry's son. She'll join us right here at Creme 2's at 5 o'clock tonight with that interview and more about Sherry's life. All right, well, we're going to be right back with more news and weather coming up after the break.